Hakuna Matata. No, wait. Wrong movie. Hey, what's up, my peoples? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the Keith's Fantasy Club, Crash Hog. So here we are, and there he is, and first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So right up front here, we have a very cool piece of artwork of Crash Hog. Love the artwork on this box. On this side of the box, just stuff I can't read. On this side of the box, converts from Robot Warrior to Apocalyptic Motorcycle and back again. Hooray for that. On the top, heavy metal on the bottom, heavy metal on the back of the box, a little schematic image of Crash Hog, and a rundown of everything that is included in the box. And you open up the front flap, and you get some more delicious artwork. I love that artwork of him. That looks awesome. And you do get an extended bio for Crash Hog. If you want to read it, read it on your own time. There's the first part. There's the rest of it. Some more artwork, and he is part of the Recycle Warriors of the Space Apocalypse! Starring Crash Hog. And that's basically it for the packaging. Also included is the collector's card with that same piece of artwork and tech specs. If that interests you, hooray for cards. So moving right along, here we have Crash Hog, which is KFC's take on a masterpiece Retgar, and he's cool. I do quite like him. Um, there are some things about this toy that, that, that bugs me, that kind of irks me a little bit, and you'll see it because it's going to happen. But <laughs> overall, I think he's really cool. So that's getting close here. So you can see the details. You can see he does have nice spiky tires, which do roll very freely, which is nice. Um, I think I would have preferred if they had given you the option, if they had given you some, uh, some alternate tires that didn't have the spikes on them. I think I would have liked that, just to have that option. But, I mean, I don't mind the spiky tires. They look cool. They're very nice and retinary. So, I can work with them. Um, this bit right here would have been nice if maybe they had hit it with some silver paints. I believe that's the brake pad. I don't know. I'm not sure. But, anyway, it would have been nice if they had... Uh, this is me trying to pretend that I know anything about motorcycles. This part right here would have been nice if they had hit it with some silver paint. But, that's all right. I can do that with a Sharpie if worse comes to worse, if I really, really want to. But, um... Yeah, the wheel, yeah, some transparent plastic right here for the front windshield as well as for the headlights. Get his nice yellow stripe right there. He has the nipple guns. <laughs> and going down the side of the motorcycle here, you can see there's quite a bit of motor detailing going on. Very nicely done. Another spiky tire here on the back, which doesn't roll as freely, but still rolls pretty well. And you come up top here, you can see it has some chromed out handlebars. And you get the side view mirrors. And you get some nice flame detailing right there on the gas tank. And yeah, there you go. You can see the underside right there. He does have kickstands that you can bring down if you want to. You know, it just brings that front tire up. But you can if you want to. Me personally, I just I leave them up because he still stays up just fine without them so hey totally up to you now these uh orange spikes here that are sticking out of the sides are made of a soft plastic so you don't have to worry about hurting yourself they do pop off you know so if you want what i like to do is I like to take them and just plug them in right here because i think that looks pretty cool that's what i do that's how i do it but there you go now just for some comparisons here he is with MP10, so you can see how he scales there with Masterpiece Prime. Here he is with Masterpiece Hot Rod, and that you... <laughs> I know he's supposed to be able to have other robots ride him. I understand that's why he's a scale he is, because other robots ride him. I get it, I understand that, you don't have to explain it to me, but it still just weirds me out that a motorcycle is this much bigger than a car. It still just, it, it weirds me out, but anyway. Here he is with the Reveal the Shield Retgar mold. So you can see how that looks there. And here he is with G1 Retgar because it's precious. Retgaring precious. And there you have that. So let's run through his accessories real quick. He does include not one, not two. But three guns! Yes, he has three guns for some reason. Sure, why not? Dare I say, why not? And all three of them 
are a separate mold, as you can see, and they all have some silver paint on them, which is nice. So you do get three guns, and you do have various ports throughout to plug these in. You can plug them in back here, plug them in here, plug them into the sides here. You can take these out, you can plug these into the sides of the, uh, of the wheel if you want. It's totally up to you. As I always say, your toy, display it however you wish. I'm actually going to take these spikes and plug them in back up here where they were. So, there you have that. He does include the top of his axe weapon right here, which is just cast in an orange plastic. And again, you can store that any part you want. Me personally, I like to plug this up here. And I give him this gun because it's the coolest looking gun. And I just plug it into the side like this. And that's how I personally display him. That's how I use it. So, there you have that. He does include... Here's a little TV. We push it box TV. <laughs> That's really cute. I really like this accessory. Right there, W2. You got some red, you got some black, you got some blue right there. So, very nice. Cute that they include this accessory. So he has his little TV. And he does include these two pegs. And we'll show what these are for in a little bit. So there you have all that. Uh, the front wheel can turn. As you can see, it's on a hinge right there. So you can turn the wheel and the handlebars can also move from side to side. They don't control the wheel, obviously, but it's locally you can kind of move them around and actually give some semblance of steerage. So there you have that. Now you do have a level of customization with this toy, which is pretty cool. And uh, here's... <laughs> And there's one of the things that irks me about this toy is that these little spikes, especially these back here, these love to pop off. And that bugs me. That bugs me. That irks my soul just a, just, just a little bit. But anyway. There is a level of customization with this toy, which is pretty cool. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention too. He will roll. If you want to call that rolling. Sounds like a motorcycle. You can do that. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing you can do. <laughs> there is an alternate configuration for the motorcycle. And to do that, you just pop the uh, front wheel off. And it just pegs in. Just open it up. Put that off the side. Then you want to take these bits right here and you want to unpeg these. And then you take the wheel and you just plug it in between this section right here. So you plug that in like that, and then what you do is you know, take these pegs right here, and these pegs will plug in. Oops, I can hold on to them. Just plug those in right there, and plug that in right there. Just kind of rotate these up like that. And you can take these and plug these into the sides like that. It's like exhaust pipes, I guess. And that's an alternate configuration there. If you wish. Totally up to you. But it's a thing. It's a thing you can do. Um, he doesn't roll too well, though, because the spikes don't really have the clearance to pass that bit right there. Unless I'm just doing something wrong. But either way, I mean, it's an alternate way to display him in his vehicle mode, if you wish. So, there you have that. So... We'll just get right down to transformation, shall we? Let's, so let's pop these off and put this off to the side for now. And then we will... Yes, yeah, spikes! Spikes love to fall off. You stay! So we'll just pop this front wheel off, put that off to the side, and let's get on with this transformation. So, what you want to do is... Actually, the first thing I want to do is transform his butt. So... <laughs> You want to untab these orange sections right here. Untab that. Untab that. And then just bring this whole assembly up like this. And what you want to do to... <laughs> you stay. Stay. Anyway. <clears throat> now the only... <laughs> you know what? Just, just stay. Just, just stay there. Stay there. Anyway, so the only way to transform these panels without popping them off the ball joints is to take them and bring them all the way down like that. And then bring them up. So basically just kind of 
go into this groove right here. So you can just bring them up and then you can bring that around like that. Pretty much the only way to do this without popping them off the ball joints. And I swear to you, it took me like half an hour to figure that out. <laughs> because the instructions just say, shift these up. And there was no other way to do it without popping them off. But anyway, once you do that, uh, these tabs right here will just go into that groove right there. So then you just get those in there. And there you go. Now his butt's transformed. So now let's move on to the rest of them. So you want to come here to these orange panels and just bring that up. Bring that up. Then you want to take his feet here. You want to untab them. Just bring them down. You can see the tabs right there. Just go into the slots right there. So untab that. And then you want to split the legs right here. And make sure that they untab themselves from this brown section here as well. And now we can bring the leg down. Bring the leg down. We can split the legs entirely. Take this wheel. Put that off to the side. Bring the legs the rest of the way down. You can take these panels right here, flip those down. Now you want to take the leg and compress them up like that. Now you want to take the foot, unrotate it, bring it up, come back here, and there's a little heel spur. Now you just want to flip out. There you go. Second verse, same as the first. Rotate, bring that up, flip that out. And there we got the legs all done. So you want to take these panels here, just bring them down and bring this whole crotch assembly and that will just snap in right there. Take these little side compartments, just rotate them down and there we have the lower body pretty much done. Let me readjust because it gets tall. There we go. So you want to take these side pieces right here and you just want to bring these all the way out for now. Bring that out. Like that, and then you want to take this assembly here and untab that, and then take these panels right here and bring those up, and that will free up the arms. Then you just take the arms and you just swing them down, and there is a uh, post right there and a port right there. So just tab those in, and then you want to flip up these tabs right here, and now you want to take the arm. Extend it, rotate it out to the bicep, and just bring it the rest of the way down. They have an arm all done, so that can be the same as the first. Just bring that down, rotate, bring it down, and there you go. So now you want to come in here and bring up his head. Pass that through, bring it all the way up. You want to take these panels and bring them down for now. We are going to have to bring these back up, but bring them down for now. Because we need these down to give us clearance for the transformation of the backpack. So now, you take this backpack section right here. It's on a rail, so you just take that and just slide it down. And now you want to on the top of this windshield section right here and just kind of push it from the bottom. And you can see the two pegs and the two ports right there. So you just want to take this section here now and bring this down. And then you want to take this section and bring it up. You want to take the handlebars and just bring them together. And take these side view mirrors and all this stuff, which I'm sure will unclip themselves. Because this is another thing that bugs me. These side view... Mm, mm, side view mirrors, rear view mirrors, whatever. These mirrors love to come undone. They'll probably come undone like 10 times before I'm done. But... We'll, we'll, we'll try, we'll try. So once you do that, you want to take this section here, fold that in, and now you just want to pass this through this gap right here. That Push that through, push that through, and bring that back as you're pushing that through. And there you go. So now, what you want to do is you want to take the handlebars here, and you want to rotate them all the way around like that. And what's going to happen here is you want to pass the handlebars through. I don't know if you can see it, but there are openings right in there. That right there, that right there. You just want to take this and bring this down and just pass it through. Just kind of get everything lined up like that. And you actually see them kind of 
peek through right there. And come on, you can do it. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. There you go. And once you've done that, then the backpack will just tab in right there. Just push that in. Come on. There you go. Push that in. Tab that in. There we go. And this section right here, you can just take it and bring that down flush against his back. And now you want to take these panels and bring these back up. Oop, his little nipple guns love to pop off also. So just take his nipple guns, bring that up, bring that up. Like that, and now you can bring the head down. And you have to do this because these panels have these little tabs right here that will sit over that panel, so you need to do that. So once you do that, you can bring this back down, make sure his mustache doesn't get caught up in it. Bring that down, like that, and you want to make sure that both of these tabs are pushed together and they will go into this notch right up in here. And that holds everything in place. And once you got that done, take his little antenna, whoop, bring them up. And we're almost done. Um, the instructions aren't entirely clear on what to do with his waist piece. Um, some pictures have them just folded all the way back like they were in vehicle mode. Some of the pictures just have them kind of angled like that. Me personally, I just like to bring them all the way forward and then bring them back on this hinge like that. And that just kind of fills out his waist to my liking. So, you know, up to you. Do whatever you want. Your toy. That's, that's the way I do it. So, there you go. So, just to add the finishing touches, let's put his knee spikes back in. Plug those back in. Take the one wheel. Plug that into his form, take the other wheel, plug that into his leg. And there we go! There we have Crash Hog, aka Rekgar, in his robot mode, and I really like him. I think he looks cool. He looks very much like a Rekgar, which is what I want for my Rekgar. I want my Rekgar to look like a Rekgar, and he looks like Rekgar, so he makes me happy. So there you are, that getting close here. On the head sculpt. Very nice head sculpt. I think they did a great job with this head sculpt. In my opinion, anyway, it looks really, really good. Very nicely done, in my opinion, anyway. His mustache and his goatee is a soft plastic, so you don't have to worry about breaking anything, which is nice. And uh, they are flexible, so when you move his head around, they will accommodate, which is nice. And yeah, overall, very nicely done. He's got his nipple guns. And uh, overall, just a very nice design. Very well done, in my opinion. Come down here. On the back, you know, he has a little bit of a backpack. He has a little, little butt flap going on there. But nothing too bad, in my opinion. I think he looks quite cool. Now articulation wise, uh, the head can move up and down, so you can have him looking up. Uh, you can't really have him looking down, you can look down a little bit, slightly. Um, he does have rotation, uh, due to the way his helmet is shaped, like once you get to a certain point, it's it, it automatically makes the head kind of angle up. So you can't really look down when he's looking to the side, kind of, sort of, maybe, a little bit. And again, the goatee is soft plastic, so you don't have to worry about that. The arms can do a full 360. They can go in and out. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a ratchet joint here. Um, as you can see, there are indentations there. And I do feel a little bit of a soft clicking on this side, but on this side, I don't feel anything. So I don't know if it's a case of it's just a ratchet that doesn't work. I don't know. I mean, there's plenty of friction there. He can hold his arms up just fine. So, I, I don't know. I don't know what's supposed to be going on in there, but... And you have that. You do have a bicep swivel. He does have a double-jointed elbow for full range of movement. You do have these spikes, which love to pop off. <laughs> ah! Just flew at me. It, flew, it, it attacked me. It attacked me. How dare you? How dare you? Oh, you can move his little... It was the only antenna around. They are on ball joints as well. Um, 
<laughs> he does have a wrist swivel. Uh, the hands are fully articulated and open them up. The thumb is on a ball joint at the base and you got a hinge here and a hinge here. And each finger is on a ball joint at the base as well as a hinge there and there. So he does have very nice finger articulation and he actually can make a pretty good looking fist. And I like that. Uh, he does have a ratcheted waist swivel. These panels right here will move out of the way to accommodate the leg movement. Legs can move forward that much, can move back, move the butt plate out of the way, can move back that much. Um, outward movement, you move this out, almost do the full splits. He does have a thigh swivel. He does have 90 degrees of bend out of the knee and his feet can pivot up well, they can pivot up a little bit, a little bit. They can move down. That's just a transformation joint. And they do have some tiltage right there. And these little like departments here. Just, you know, they're on a swivel. They're on a hinge as well. So you can move those around. Sometimes these like to pop off as well. Hey, you stay on. There you go. So there you have that. Now, of course, you can have him holding any one of the three guns. Um, the instructions have him holding one and they have uh, two of them plugged in here. He does have ports on his shoulders. So, you know, you can do that if you want or just have one plugged down here. Have it holstered. As always, your toy. Display it however you wish. Me personally, I just like to take the gun and plug it into his hand here. I do have to remove the tire to make this a little bit easier. And it's like your typical masterpiece gun handle. He has a tab on either side. So you can hold it in his left or his right hand. And you just take that, peg it in, wrap his fingers around it. Oh, um, there you go. Just plug that back on. And there you have that. Now you take these bits that came off the motorcycle, and what happens here is these will plug into each other like that. And then you take the axe head and that will plug on right there and that makes his weapon which is pretty cool how they work that out and you can just take that and plug that into his other hand like so wrap his fingers around it and there you go you got him hey <laughs> you stay how dare you there you go so there you have him with his axe weapon and that looks pretty cool. I dig it. I dig it very much. And his little TV, you can store um, these little side compartments here. Do have opening panels. So if you want, you can take his little TV. Just pop it in there. You can store his little TV. So you can watch on the go. So we can talk to you free. So there you have that. Very cool figure in my opinion. Now for comparison. Here he is with Masterpiece Hot Rod. So you can see how I get, get the axe out from in front of his face. Don't be rude. Don't be rude. So there he is with Masterpiece Hot Rod. Here he is with Masterpiece Rodimus. So you can see how he scales there. With the... <laughs> My Hot Rod does not like to stand at all. His ankles are so freaking loose. Stay. But there he is with the two official Masterpiece Hot Rods and Rodimuses. So there you have that. Uh, here he is with DX9's carry. So you can see how he scales there with him. Uh, here he is with Masterpiece Magnus. So you can see how he scales there. Obviously much shorter than Masterpiece Magnus. So there you have that. Uh, what else have we got? Here he is with KFC's, not Masterpiece, not Blaster. Just so you can see how he scales with a uh, fellow KFC Masterpiece toy. Here he is with Unique Toys Buzzing. You can see how they scale together. Here he is with the Reveal the Shield Rekdar. So you can see how that looks. And here he is with... G1 Rekgar, Kajas Pressure, Bowie Grunner Pressure. There you go. And here he is with MP10. Almost forgot him. 
There he is with Masterpiece Prime. And there you go. So yeah, there is Crash Hog, a very cool figure in my opinion. I do really like him. I think he's very cool. Um, just little things that bug me, like those those rearview mirrors love to pop off. The little spikes love to pop off. Like they just kind of irk me. But yeah, no. Overall, though, I think he is a very cool figure. Very well done, in my opinion. He does have a little bit of die cast in him, so he does have a little bit of heft to him, which is nice. And um, yeah, it's overall very cool. I'm I'm quite quite happy with him. Um, I did not buy the other generic junkie on dude because I didn't care i just want to wreck gar but the cool thing about that is that if you do have the other junkie on you can actually swap around these parts because um the arms pop off uh these chest panels pop off so you do again have that level of customization so if you did buy the uh the other junkie on dude i forget what they're calling him I'm just calling him Junkie on dude. But if you did buy the other Junkie on dude, it does add to that level of customization so you can just kind of make your own custom Junkie on dude. I just like saying Junkie on dude, but there you go. <laughs> but yeah, as far as Crash Hog goes, I, I do quite like him. I am very, very happy with him. So there you go. So if you would like a Crash Hog or any of KFC's other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so check that out. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed, also linked in the description down below, so check that out as well. And I think that's it, so don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below, and I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is the Keith's Fantasy Club Crash Hog, and this is M Go saying, remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be geek, be proud. Boom in your face! And we will bring forth a new era of peace and happiness. Till all are. And it will eliminate even the toughest things. Uh, Redgar, what are you doing? What you talking about, Willis? I don't, I really don't understand you when you talk like this. We are two wild and crazy guys. What, what, what does that have to do with anything? The plane, boss, the plane. This is really making no sense. Homie, don't play that. Who, who's homie? Is that your final answer? I don't even know what the question is. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. I don't. <sighs> I just don't.